November 2nd, 1912. Although my whole being is in theory consecrated to thee, O sublime master, who art the life, the light, and the love in all things, I still find it hard to carry out this consecration in detail. It has taken me several weeks to learn that the reason for this written meditation, its justification, lies in the very fact of addressing it daily to thee. In this way, I shall put into material shape each day a little of the conversation I have so often with thee. I shall make my confession to thee as well as it may be, not because I think I can tell thee anything, for thou art thyself everything, but our artificial and exterior way of seeing and understanding is, if it may be so said, foreign to thee, opposed to thy nature, still, by turning towards thee, by immersing myself in thy light, at the moment when I consider these things, little by little, I shall see them more like what they really are. Until the day when, having made myself one in identity with thee, I shall no more have anything to say to thee, for then I shall be thou. This is the goal that I would reach. Towards this victory, all my efforts will tend more and more. I aspire for the, de for the day when I can no longer say, I, for I shall be thou. How many times a day, still, I act without my action, being consecrated to thee. I at once become aware of it by an indefinable uneasiness, which is translated in the sensibility of my body, by a pang in my heart. I then make my action objective to myself, and it seems to me ridiculous, childish, or blameworthy. I deplore it for a moment. I am sad, until I dive into thee, and there, losing myself with a child's confidence, await from thee the inspiration and strength needed to set right the error in me and around me. Two things that are one, for I have now a constant and precise perception of the universal unity determining an absolute interdependence of all